I haven't put many videos out recently. Been rather busy getting building work done in the house, and also the garden's in a bit of a mess. But I thought I'd show a few plants that you might not have seen before. Here we've got a pulmonaria, Diana Clare. And what I like about it is the foliage. Really nice silver foliage that stands out in the border. But in March, we get these nice little flowers. There's a few bees on these earlier today. And that's quite early for the bees in the garden. So they're great for attracting early pollinators. But well, they start off with these, like a blue colour. And then they go pink really nice little plant and these flowers contrast with the hookah that's just starting to go come back into life again it looked a bit sorry for itself during the frosts and the hard winter that we had and I can see something in there eating it so we'll have to keep an eye on that and as always you can't beat a forest flame these are everywhere in our area and you take them for granted but you really do appreciate this new spring growth I feature this in every April video that I do looks good all the time every year this camellia produces all these flowers the only problem with them of course is that they produce hundreds of these flowers but the petals end up everywhere all over the soil still an indispensable plant and the skimmier japonica that had those buds on all over winter and now that's come into flower this likes to be in a shady location totally reliable plant no matter what the weather is and just below, I featured this before, it's a Hypericum. Um, now, these can be tender in the frost, but they don't get killed off. They always start producing these new leaves. So as you can see, every leaf has come off this, but now it's going to leaf out again. And it will still produce the flowers, because it comes from this year's growth. One for Lodi's Cherry Ingram in flower again. Really underrated plant this. It's a fantastic ground cover. And I'm going to spread this everywhere in the garden. That April blue colour. Above it I've got my boots here. This is not looking in good shape. It's not going to die. But as you can see, it's full of this spotting. And you can see this leaf damage. Leaf damage at the tips. In the centre of the plant, I've had to cut one of the fronds back because it was completely brown. Which is a shame. Now, this is winter hardy and this is not going to die. But I think it has been hit by those late frosts. So it's going to be interesting to see how this bounces back. The problem I've got, of course, is I've got all these big leaves here. And is the plant going to produce enough in fast enough time to replace these battered-looking larger leaves? I've already lost a frond that come through last year. And this only really puts out about two or three fronds here. It might do better in a warmer location, but for me, Although it's, um, it does grow, it's not that fast. Nothing compared to the Trocky Carpus. I bought a load of these primrose plants last year. Really cheap from the supermarket. Now I think people get these every year, plant them. And then when the flowers go, they just get rid of them. Because they start looking a bit tatty with just the leaves. And when these go, it will grow when you set the leaves if you put it back. It's just not that attractive. But 
I've just left a load of them in the ground and they've come back this year these nice flowers I cut this Japanese quint back last autumn which would have killed off a lot of the flowers lower down and what I'm trying to do I'm trying to have this more of a wall shrub now what happens is this grows into a, into a big round bush and they end up having to cut the front stems out to stop it encroaching on the lawn but every time you do that you lose next year's flowers so what I've decided to do is get rid of a lot of the growth at the front let it go a little bit taller and then I'll have more exposure to these red flowers so when these die back I'm going to trim them back or tip them at the top and try and encourage a bit more growth up against the wall and less towards the lawn it looks like my totally tangerine gene has got started already with the flowering we're only on the 1st of April today this one's a nice little ground cover it's been flowering for a few weeks now called Georgia Blue now I have got a feeling that this could become a little bit of a thug if, if it was left to its own devices because I've noticed it tries to pop up in all different locations so maybe I need to cut it back but this is great for early flowering because this got going around about the middle of March nice little underrated ground cover now just behind this little choice of plants I've got my Pittosporum Tom Thumb and I've been really surprised because I did not expect this to come away with no damage after that frost that we had I reckon we've hit minus 8 in this garden at least while I was away and I expected this to lose the top leaves but it surprised me it's done, done quite fine got this dwarf pear tree against the wall here and it's full of blossom just hoping they're not going to get caught out by a late frost because this is what can do these in May all the flowers on the apple tree come out and you never get done by frost but this one is susceptible let's hope that I get to keep any flowers that come out on this this abelia kaleidoscope can also be tender and frost it doesn't die off but it can lose a lot of the leaves if it gets too cold but this one's done fine and I think it might be something to do with this broom bush this has gone absolutely nuts in its growth and it's probably, this is probably an example of why you shouldn't plant things too close together because this has really put on some growth um, and it looks as if I suspect we've got quite a few flower buds on this so, so it lo should look quite spectacular when the flowers are out but I'm going to have to work out what to do with it because it's big now now this mess here is what is left of the back border that I used to have if you've seen some of my older videos I used to have a lot of hebes in here fuchsia a couple of palms and I'm going to change the use of the area now this used to be a little sun trap for the plants nice little microclimate but it's not just the plants that like little sun traps humans like them as well so I've decided I'm going to keep the peach tree despite the fact that it gets leaf curl every year and I'm going to put a little I'm going to extend a little patio here so I, so I can actually sit in this corner and appreciate the sun's rays without getting battered by the wind that comes into this garden It'll be a couple of months before this is all finished now I've pulled up quite a lot of the plants in that back border give them away but I'm not losing my albacans hebe 
I've actually ripped it out the ground, watered it, put it into a pot, and then I need to work out what I'm going to do with it now. I have to keep it in a pot and move it to somewhere else in the garden. But out of all the hebes, I find this one is one of the toughest ones. And it's a great plant because of the silver foliage. This winter, the lawn was full of patches, moss, and dead patches. So I keep trying to reseed the thing and the wood pigeons are there straight away. We've got loads of them in this area and I just can't keep them away until I found this mutant duck in my mum's house. This little duck statue seems to do the trick. So I hope that I can fix the lawn before the pigeons work out that it's not a threat. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.